Hello, it's Liz from Old Stables Crafts. Thank you very much for joining me again today. Uh, today I'm going to be using a bundle from the new mini catalogue, which will be available for customers on the 6th of September. Of course, if you want to get your hands on some of these goodies early, you can always get the starter kit and become a demonstrator and you can put new items in your starter kit and it's up to 130 pounds or 175 euros for 99 pounds or 129 euros and you get free shipping as well which is just amazing let me flip the camera down and show you what i will be using and it's the rustic crate uh, it's a photopolymer stamp set uh, these are the size of the images uh, so we've got poinsettias general greenery, um, corn, sunflowers, pumpkins, um, a crate. Every day with you is better for you. Good times take time. Blessed be on measure. And then the dies, one of which I've got out. That one goes there. We've got hello. Um, the two pieces that make up the crate, and I will be showing you how to make that up. This is the die for the uh, the crate image we've got hinges if you want to add hinges we've got dies for each of the three main um, images we've got a little label here we've got a handle if you want to put a handle on your crate and we've got some hands as well so lots and lots of lovely dies oops why am I closing it this is the one I want so let me pop that out um, I'll show you the card that I have made that I'm going to then replicate but make slightly different. So this is the one I've made. I had to make the one with the sunflowers on, obviously, because I love a sunflower. So this is using the Crumb Cake um, Colour Family Designer Series paper. Um, and it's one piece. So I've used the hearts for the background and this dash pattern for the foreground. And I've teared the... Um, the edges. This is a really um, what's the word? Fashionable. That's the word I'm looking for. Look at the moment to go back to that kind of slightly um, lived-in look. So this teared look. This is wild wheat ribbon. I've picked out the pumpkin pie that's in the pumpkin um, for my layer, and then put it on a um, crumb cake card base. Uh, so, and then I've used some of the sequins that I will be using again for the card we're about to make. So, oh, and I did fussy cut these two flowers out just to give them a bit of a lift. So let me, oh, I don't know why I'm putting that over there because that's what I need. So this time I'm going to be using this paper, which is from, and this is from the new catalogue as well. It's called the Country, no, it's not, it's called the Garden Walk paper. So we've got... This is less Christmassy. This is the only Christmas paper that, as far as I can see, that's in it. So we've got uh, Mossy Meadow Diagonal, this kind of ditzy floral, which is Pretty Peacock Wild Wheat. That's the card. <laughs> that's the word. Wild Wheat, uh, Poppy Parade, and... Ooh! Couldn't do that again if I tried. Uh, Calypso Coral is the pink. So that's the ditzy. Then we've got the cut, the pattern that I'm using, which is poinsettias. Um, another little ditzy on white with a stripe, wild wheat stripe with this really rather, um, I think it's, I'm looking at this as 1970s. I had wallpaper that was not dissimilar to that. Um, another ditzy pattern, this time with the Calypso coral featuring a lot. Um, Lost Lagoon also in the colour scheme. Again, a really lovely pattern and a diagonal. So if you're not into lots of florals, you have other options. You've got another floral with a stripe and then um, the one that's on the front of the pack. So again, Calypso Coral. I'm sure it's Lost Lagoon. No, it's not Lost Lagoon. So we've got Calypso Coral, Garden Green, Mossy Meadow, Poppy Parade, Pretty Peacock and Wild Wheat. Okay, so um, those are the bits that I'm going to be using for my background. I pulled this piece to use for the piece across the middle. And I'm just going to, I'm going to use all of it. I'm just going to, I will cut it down to size, but I will just tear this. So I'm going to prep all of this and then put it all together. 
So just tear this. Now, if you wanted to, you could add color to this torn edge. Uh, so you could come in with um, a sponge dauber and just pop it along the edge uh, just to pick out one of the colors. If I was doing that, I'd probably use wild wheat um, because that's featuring in my color scheme. I'll be using a basic white card base for this because we have got white in it. So that's going to go across there. It's actually going to go to the edge of the card. Um, so putting it all together, I have already cut a piece of this ribbon, which is, I think it's actually real red, but it goes really well. Ooh, I'm pulling lots of ribbon out. Um, yeah, it says it's real red, but it goes perfectly well with the poppy parade. So that's fine, but it's got the gold in it, which for Christmas obviously is a little bit of an added bonus. Um, but if I bring that up, you can probably see that it doesn't clash at all. So I'll be using the gold sequins for this one. Now, I do need to obviously get my stamped image. So I'm using the poinsettias, Memento ink. So I'm just going to ink that up. And because I'm using blends, I'm using Memento ink. Let's just stamp that there. I have already fussy cut the most forward of those poinsettias so I can add some more dimension. Uh, but let me just trim this down a little and I'll die cut this. I've already prepped the die cut for the crate and I will explain what I've done with that in a moment. I haven't stuck it together yet because I want to obviously show you how to do that. So there's my die cut image all the way up. Like that. You could put some low tack tape on if you want, which I do. So I'm going to grab some of my low tack tape. And you can use post-it note tape, works just as well, or indeed a post-it note. What you don't want, because I have seen them in the shops, is the extra sticky post-it notes. Um, those would end up ripping your paper, because when you run um, a low-tack tape through your die cutter, it actually gets stickier because you're pushing it into the, into the paper. So do just be be mindful of that and um, yeah don't go for extra sticky it won't last longer it'll just ruin your ruin your paper so I've got wild wheat poppy parade and mossy meadow there are no garden green blends I wish there were but there aren't uh, so I'm going to start by coloring all of the poinsettia petals with light poppy parade. So I'm going to go around the outside of those petals first because I can then colour in the middle, avoiding the very middle there because that's where we want to bring in the wild wheat for our centres. And I know people have a bit of a love hate relationship with wild wheat, but I think in the right circumstance. It's a really useful colour and for autumn, it's going to be fantastic. In fact, Wild Wheat and Moody Mauve, if you want that kind of slightly pink golden tone, it will be perfect as a combination. And I've actually got a sample um, that I'm, I'm not showing in one of the videos, but I'm, I will be showing on the blog post that goes with one of the videos that uses the, now what do we call them? Uses the, I can't remember what they're called. No, can't remember. Anyway, it's the new, the new uh, masks from the new mini catalog, which are gorgeous. They've got a sunflower in them. 
a layering, a set of layering masks that make a sunflower. Well, three actually. Right, so I'm going to colour round the bit I want to protect so that I don't go into that. And then I can just colour this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with the dark and add some detail and then go over again with my light. But to go straight in with the dark, even when you blend it out with the light, you'll have a harsher finish. Um, so by by doing the light first, you get a better a better finish. Right, so dark and and basically anything that's going to be definitely in shadow and then all that veining I'm going to add dark and I'm not too worried about how accurate I am at this point because it's all going to be blended out again so it doesn't have to be pretty at this stage we're just adding color kind of where we want it roughly but as I say if there would be shadow then add some dark. So that's all going to be in shadow. More shadow there. Round the centre again. Let's go all the way around that centre. Shadow. This is really easy colouring. Now you could, if you wanted, you could use your watercolour pencils. I would then blend out with um, a colour lifter because that gives, gives you a really nice blend. And it also protects your paper, your card, because it won't pill. It will still bleed through your card a little, but not as much as if you were using blends. So literally all I'm doing is going over the petals again with my light and it will blend it out for me. So you can be really inaccurate with your colouring on this because all you're doing is blending out that harsh edge of the dark poppy parade. So as so long as you stay inside the lines you're going to be golden. Now we are going to cover up this poinsettia but I'm still going to colour it so that you can see how I coloured the one that I fussy cut. So I'm going to take my light wild wheat and just add that to the centre. I don't actually need my dark wild wheat, but they do come in a bundle. So uh, now, which way around shall I do this? Actually, I'm going to do this the other way around. So I'm going to add the dark and then blend out with the light. So this will probably end up with more obvious outlines, which is fine because veining on leaves is quite prominent particularly on a poinsettia. Many, many years ago when I was still at school, so a long time ago, so this is the light, actually it's blending it out quite nicely. Um, I spent a Christmas holiday working in a florist, which was great, apart from florists can't have heating. So it was incredibly cold. And one of the jobs that I had every day was when the um, delivery arrived I had to prep all the flowers which was in an, a garage underneath the shop and the garage doors were open so that everything was kept cool. It was so cold and of course you couldn't wear gloves because you were handling flowers with water and your gloves would get wet so you know it was fun. Um, 
Anywho, right, so these are my two die cuts. Now, I coloured the uh, wood grain just by using a Wild Wheat Stampin' Right marker and colouring the graining on the die. So I think you can just about see there's graining on this. So I just, with the side of my marker, just rubbed over. You could use an ink pad, it would just be a, um, a more solid result and you also need to be careful that you don't push too much because otherwise you'll just send the whole thing um, wild wheat. You don't want the ink to go into uh, the bits that are negative, if you see what I mean. So fold in all of these fold marks or along all of these fold marks and ignore this one that's just there so that we know that it's a corner and then I am going to burnish. So this crate will not make a 3D crate. It is a flat crate, but that you can slip things in. So don't expect to be able to make a little crate. So add some liquid adhesive if it would like to run. There we are. all of these tabs and don't go mad with it you only need a small amount I love this glue it is my favourite adhesive so take your crate front and just line up and this is why the um, liquid adhesive is great because you've got that lovely wiggle room where you can adjust so that everything's as you want it. Now you could use the hinges because there's dies for the hinges. Um, you could do those in gold or a different colour. Um, I'm not going to for this one but you can. So that is our crate. It's As I say it's not meant to be 3D. Took me a while to work that one out. Let it be said. So, I don't need that. Got that. And I've got my set here. So, this is going to go in here. And I'm going to have it in sort of like that. And then this is going to sit over the top, like that, so that we've got something coming over the front. In fact, I might even tuck that in a little bit more so that we've got this coming over the front there. So let's stick this down. I'm just going to add some adhesive in here. And you could fussy cut some leaves as well if you wanted. So I'm just putting a little bit of glue. You don't need a lot. Um, it's just a hold of this in place. So I'm just going to have this Ooh, kind of like that. So that will hold that in place. And we'll cover up or fill, should I say, the handle there. This I'm then going to pop on with a dimensional. Just need one. And line that up. So that's now giving it some dimension, strangely. And let's pop all this together. So, first thing I need to do is attach these two bits together. It's almost a shame to cover up this pattern, but I do like the, the pattern on the back as well. And then pop this onto my wild wheat mat. I'm never quite sure, and maybe you could leave a comment. When is a mat a mat and when is it a layer? I don't, I, I kind of use them as interchangeable terms, but is there a right and a wrong? I don't know. Right, so I need to cut this so that it is the same width as my card base, which means I need it to be ten and a half centimetres. Now, obviously, I can't line it up. What I should probably have done is cut it before I tore it, 
if that makes sense. And the reason I'm cutting it now, rather than waiting until it's on the card, is because I want to wrap the ribbon round it. Whoop. And I can't do that and trim it to size. It just wouldn't work. So I'm going to add my... Lay this on here. and then Because this is going to tuck underneath everything. Well, underneath this piece. So what I need to do is line this up. Set that way up to a line. And going to be kind of there. This is seal plus. So it's that line. And then I can add that, flip it round, line it up again so that I know I've got a straight edge because obviously I can't line it up at the top as well uh, because I've torn it. That's torn it. There we go. Then this I'm going to add some more seal plus two so that I've sandwiched my ribbon between seal plus. just to adhere it to my card front when we get to that point, which isn't yet, so I'll be popping this to one side for a moment while I do the rest of my card, but it just means that then everything can go together quickly. Burnish the fold of my card, attach this. Now I do still need to do the sentiment you have to have a sentiment on the outside of the card which is, there's no law about it and take this and again I'm going to line up my card on my grid paper and I'm going to come in about there and straight across bit of adhesive sticking out there we go so that's nice and straight on the edges then all I need to do is pop this in place and I've, I'm have i going to pop it up again with dimensionals so I'll have, it's going to be a, an expensive card to post if you're in the UK sorry sometimes you just have to embrace the fact that some cards are worth a little bit more postage or you could, of course, hand deliver if it's someone local. So that goes there. And then sentiment. I think I'm going to use the same sentiment I used before. And hmm, I think I'm going to go pop a uh, pretty peacock. She's there. So good things take time. Very quickly, just fussy cut around that. So take time is straight, and then I'm just going to do a bit of a wiggle around here. And I'm not kind of deliberately going into each of the letters, I'm just doing a general wiggle. Um, people will fill in the fact that you've kind of gone in. It's a bit of an optical illusion. Right, so this is then going to go on here. And I think I'm just going to stick it straight onto my crate on the previous one because there were more bits hanging down. I um, 
I had it hanging off the bottom of the crate, but I think for this, we've got that crate saying cover me, so let's cover me. Cover it like that. And then grab some of our Neutrals Adhesive Back Sequins. And my take your pick, and I'm going to use the gold because then it will tie in with the gold of the crate, uh, of the ribbon rather. And I'm just going to find my three spots and then add some more. I am really enjoying my three threes. If I could decide which way I wanted them, of course. Let's use a. Well, actually, I won't use a second large one. That'll look odd if I only do that in one space. So there we go. So that's the card that I've just made. Here's the one I made earlier. So as you can see, this comes down more, which is why I didn't want to fill so much of the crate. So I hope you have enjoyed that. I love this stamp set bundle. It's really, really pretty and you can make. It's not really seasonal because you've got the just green greenery. Um, it doesn't have to be Christmas or autumn. You can use it around the year. You can use just the crate. Um, you could actually do without the dies. I think the dies are great. And I can see that I'm going to use this crate for other things as well. Toy box. Um, toy box at Christmas. That would be fantastic. Um, anyway, I hope you have enjoyed that. Let me flip the camera up so I can say goodbye properly. So, yes, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, a thumbs up is always appreciated. Do remember you can subscribe to my channel. Uh, you'll find a link to the blog post about this in the description bar. And if you've got any questions or comments, you can leave those below the description bar and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. In the meantime, thank you very much for joining me, joining me and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now.